Hi everyone, welcome back. You're seeing major action out there in the markets and I'm talking about that whole debt ceiling. Remember this morning what I told you? I've been saying this for a few days. Everyone's trying to make it sound like DC got everything going just perfectly correct, which we know based on history that it just doesn't do it. I went out and I've negotiated quite a few contracts in my time. I was a union president and every time you think you have it figured out, and you might say, oh, our side feels good about it. They'll agree. They'll agree to it. They'll say, yes, it's good. We're good to go. Everybody will be happy. The other side says, no, we're not agreeing to it. Because every side wants to get more for their side. And, and I would think that D.C., this would be the absolute toughest place to negotiate. Now, for everybody listening, saying, what's he rambling on about? We get into it. It's this right here. A debt deal is not close. Key McCarthy ally said, no, no, that's what I showed you this morning, right? It says, and this is from the House Financial Services Chairman, Patrick McHenry. Then we move into today. That was what I talked about this morning. I said, it's going to get dysf dysfunctional. Here you go. Republicans walk out of debt ceiling talks, says White House isn't being reasonable. Now, it depends what side of the, the fence you're on here. If you're blue, you're red. I'm not here to discuss which side should do what. All right, I'm here to talk about the effects on the stock market, and that's it. If you're looking for a political channel, this is not the one. Go find another one. I'm here to talk about how we can make money off of this. When I read that, that they walked out, and I knew it was coming. I, I talked to some of the people over at my Patreon and Discord, which, if you haven't done it, you should come on over and join us. we got a lot of good things going on. And, of course, we're discussing it right now. You can see the link down below. Uh, come on over and join us. We have the different levels, so you can get access to the private Discord as well. But we've been discussing this, and seeing them walk out, I didn't know it was going to get that bad. I thought there would be hang-ups where we would see them discussing it, to, using the, the, the press as a weapon. Oh, you know, this side isn't doing this. The other side's asking for too much. The other side's not doing anything. Well, that's exactly what I thought we'd get to, but I didn't think we'd get to a point where they walk out. I have been saying here that I thought I'd get down to the last day or three, that within 72 hours of X date, that we would go ahead and see something get done, pushed down, we're going to tie it to budgeting, something like that. Now, I got to tell you, for those that haven't been following this, this saga, we're hearing that the money might be enough to last until they get to the June 15th, the tax, the estimated taxes, I pay estimated taxes, everybody has to pay it by June 15th. They say now that it looks like they have enough money to get to that date. If they do, that means they now get that, in, that inflow of money and they can last all the way up to the end of July into August now before they truly hit the real X date. And I think, and I'm wondering, are both sides aware of that? Which obviously, if I'm aware of it, they are aware of it. And are they now going to play that to their advantage or disadvantage? Like they can walk out because they know there's more time. And the other side says, we don't have to give in anymore because there's more time. I think when you get down to the last three weeks of a true X date, that is when you get a lot of panic in the markets and everything else. If we do have until the end of July, just say that's the time, the end of July. Well, then they have a full two months. And I wouldn't expect a lot to be done yet. I think there could be a little panic now. But the truth is, if this was bad walking out, this isn't going to get done, the markets would be getting hammered now. We know, and I said, I thought for the, the month of May, we'd see a, the 3 to 5% drop in the overall market if things went like we thought they would, and the X date truly was June 1st. Now, if it isn't June 1st, well, that's a whole different ballgame. Now, I'm going to be taking advantage of this. I, I'm going to be making moves for those, and we're going to talk about them. Uh, but for those who have not done it, get your free stocks from Moomoo down below. Link's down below. All you got to do is put $100 or more and use my link. You get 10 stocks worth up to $2,000 apiece. And, of course, the Weeble. Any deposit, a penny, a dollar, anything, using my link, you get up to 12 stocks worth up to $30,600. And that's anybody 18 or older in the house. You all can click on the link and sign up, but you have to use the link. Take advantage of that. Now, I got to tell you, I'm, I made moves for those who have been following, and we'll show you the market right now. It's just bouncing around a little bit, up, down, up, down. But it's red, but not as bad as what most people would believe. I would have thought that the markets today would have been just feeling pain if it was going the way it probably should have. If this truly was a panic, I would have expected the S&P to be down a full percent. It's not. You also had something else happening. You had the Fed come out and do a little 
prepared speech. Like they were very careful in everything they said. And for those wondering what I'm talking about, Powell, uh, Fed's Powell says risk more balance, June policy decision unclear. Basically, he wanted to come out and make sure everyone realized that they're now looking at the data up to the day when they make the decision. And now they can make a balanced decision that they, maybe they raise rates, maybe they don't. But it went from the hawkish statements that we've been hearing. And I mean, it was bad. We were hearing a lot of the different presidents for the Fed coming out and just saying that we, we think there probably needs to be more rate hikes. And you're hearing it all over the place. But then Fed, then JP comes out and he just kind of puts the kibosh to all of it and says, look, here we go. 13.8% chance of raising rates now. That's it. It was 30 something percent yesterday. So he dropped that and he said, look, we, we might, we might not. But at the end of the day, we might be able to just watch because there's a lagging effect. And I've said this to you. I said it to everybody on this channel. And, and that there's a, a lagging effect of six months to 18 months in full for the rates to kick in. And of course, it takes JP himself to say it, to let the markets know, guys, you're, you're getting a little you're getting a little ahead of yourself. The damage from what we're doing hasn't even kicked in yet. And I think that's why you're seeing the markets kind of, uh, you know, first they're overbought, technically speaking. And now you see the Fed coming out saying, everybody calm down. You notice every time the markets get around 4,200, what does JP do? He comes out and just, just squashes everything. He doesn't want it to go too high. I've said this for a long time. The Fed doesn't want the markets to go wild. It makes their jobs harder. And then you have more inflation. Everything gets bad. So I think they, they have their level around that 4,200. They'll come out and say something negative, pushes the markets down a little bit. And of course, that's what we saw. We saw that today. So uh, the other thing, uh, if you haven't been watching this, uh, people keep telling me, hey, the banking things and everything else are good, but they're not. And I'm going to, the headline for today, if I can get it up there, there we go. Uh, Janet Yellen told bank CEOs more mergers may be necessary. This is from today. Sources came out and said, folks, if you don't see this as a major issue and everybody's like, well, the backstop's there, everything's good. And the banks, you know, they can, the, the the bond issues taken care of then why is she warning people that more mergers have to happen and for i'll make it real plain speak for everyone that means more bank failures are on the way and she's saying some of these banks are going to have to take them over and that's that's the game plan when a bank fails a smaller bank fails we want other banks to take them over that's what she's saying we're going to have more happening why because the fed actions take six months to 18 months to fully kick in it's going to happen. We see re commercial real estate getting absolutely squashed. That's going to have an effect on the banks that maybe did too much, took too many risks. They're going to get hit. So it's not over when you, when you look at it that way, but it doesn't mean the market's going to crash either. Uh, we're seeing, like I said, the banks have been taking care of themselves. Fed loans to banks rise. They're now at record highs since they did the program, which means the banks are protecting themselves, but it's more and more lending. And like I said, I, the market's going to be all over the place. And we'll take another look here to show you where they're at. But the Dow Jones, S&P, NASDAQ, all down a little bit. Russell getting hit pretty bad. Why? Well, if the Fed's telling us they're going to stay high, these small caps that might need money are going to, to pay a lot more. And they usually get hit hard. But when the Fed pivots, for those looking for plays, that will be the leaders. Look at the stocks in the Russell. The Russell, the small caps are the ones that I said, and the growth stocks are going to lead us once we get to a true pivot for the economy and everything else. I know what people are going to, oh, Mo, we're already in a bull cycle. We're already running. We're already off. And look, I said that we are going to have a bad time in the market, Q2 or Q3. I've been saying that. We're in the middle of Q2. We just got started in Q2. You can't come out and say you were wrong. Listen, folks, at the end of Q3, I expect the pain will be here. And if it's not, well, then we'll discuss it. Then I'll, I'll have to make one of those videos where we're, we're talking about how the, the data did not work. But up to this point, I think we're absolutely going to see a lot of pain before the end of Q3. I think the bond market's pricing it in as well. You can see it in that. So something's wrong, either the equity market or the bond market. And bond markets are usually correct when it comes to this. So we'll see. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Continue to be loading up on the bonds, because I believe it's a once in a generation kind of opportunity, but we're not there yet, because if the Fed tightens, if they happen to tighten in, in June here,
that'll be, I think, the last hit. I don't think they will. I've said it before. I thought the last one in May was the, the latest, the last hike, but we don't know. So if you haven't done it, come on over and join me. I think there's going to be some pain coming, especially with the walkouts and stuff like that. We know the debt crisis from 2011, 2013, before the downgrade in 2011, hurt us about 4%. And that's what I expect. I think that's 2013 too, 4% down. And then the downgrade in 2011 from Standard Poor's pushed it down 17. So I don't think we'll have a downgrade, but you never know. And if they do have a downgrade, then you will see a quick three week, 15 to 20% drop in the markets. If they don't have the downgrade and it's just a normal debt ceiling fight, I still thought we'd have about a 4% down based on history. And of course, if they can figure it out, you saw what happened to the markets, they start to run. You'll get a short-term run, and uh, but I still think anything over 42.50 is hard to get above as we're seeing in the market. So that's my update, folks. If you haven't done it, come on over to the Patreon or join here on YouTube as a channel member. You get access over there to the Discord and see my buys and sells and all that good stuff. And of course, like I said, get those free stocks from Weeble and Moomoo down below. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.